Yo, what to do, YouTube? This your boy, Tonyo HD, back again with another video, man. So, uh, man, I'm back. Just letting y'all know for a minute. Just want to talk to y'all real quick. So, I resigned my contract from USA Trucks. I finished my lease back in July. Um, and I stayed with them for a little while because they was with DB Shanker and all that. And, you know, trying to see if that's really what I wanted to do. But... It wasn't working out. So the reason why I left is because simple is is because they don't have enough contracts and they are oversaturating the IC department. So when they when it's oversaturated, it's not very many loads to pick from and they're losing contracts and you know they're they said they're 85% spot market. It kind of puts you in a situation where we know the spot market is bad. We don't have very many contracts and we're constantly keep high, higher bringing on ICs and now they're leasing their trucks now. So they're probably making more money on the leases than they are the loads. So, which I think they probably are. And I just decided to go ahead and get up out of there, man. So I'm with a new company um i booked my own loads and i like it here a lot you know i'm making more money making more revenue it's still 65 percent, but it's all right i'm cool with that i don't have a trailer so i'm not gonna go start my own authority without a trailer and even then i probably wouldn't be doing van if i had my own authority so you know this company offers flatbed for owner ops and stuff like that and you can learn that stuff uh, they do do doubles and triples here. So I, I took a road test not too long ago for doubles and triples because I did that at XPO. And, you know, they have a lot of variety. You can do tanker. You can switch your trailer. You don't have to stick to one thing. And that's a blessing. So, and the revenue is, is extremely high. I deal with a lot of direct customers, contract freight, and uh, spot market if that's, if that's what I want to do. But mo most of it is direct customers. So, I love that. So USA just does not have those three things to be successful, you know. So, um, and just relying on USA is just like you know their fuel discounts are sixty cent off, and they're not giving you a hundred percent of the fuel surcharge. They're taking seventy five percent of that, seventy percent of that, and they're giving you seventy percent of the rev line haul, but. It, that doesn't mean anything if you don't have the contracts and you constantly keep hiring drivers and uh, IC drivers and putting them in your old trucks to make money. So it just it just it, it just became bad. You know, USA is not a terrible company. It's just when I started, the IC department was only like eight months old. So I was I've been there for a very long time. You know. It, but now it's just not the same anymore guys so if you guys are over there man hey i pray to god that you realize that hey man you know you need a lot more revenue to take care of your truck you know that's all i'm gonna say uh usa is not a terrible company they're good with their company drivers and stuff like that but for me i don't want to compete with company drivers and i don't want to compete with an oversaturated ic department because it been times you know loads cancel and they gave it to another driver, their company side. So I'm just not going to do, I'm not going to compete with company drivers. When I have a revenue I have to hit and USA is not, they don't treat you like it's a partnership. So they make all these different rules and decisions and we sign the contract because, you know, we love the company, but you have to put your feelings to the side and realize that, Hey, these people are only in it for themselves. So it is what it is, you know, um, for right now, you know, uh, but they're still a good company. I'm not like bashing them or anything. I just give them my constructive criticism and that's what helped people. That's what helped companies and people grow. So, you know, it's, it, it, things have to change, you know, you just can't stay the same and think that's going to work out. And I just gave up, man. I was like, I'm done with this. You know, I'm tired of making zero settlements. I'm tired of making $1,500 a week, 2000 or or less. And I'm just like, I'm not going to keep running for pennies. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to keep doing that and not have a truck payment <clears throat> and all of that. So 
and I'm trying to pay my truck off this year. So that's my goal. And I pray to the Lord willing, you know, God would bless me to pay it off and I'll be done. You know, I don't have to worry about that overhead for my vehicle. Then I could work on um, possibly getting a trailer, you know. But right now, things are just, you know, things are getting better here at the new company I met. Um, I just I just recently leased on to them and I love it here, man, already, you know, uh, just have to learn some things. I'm learning the learning curve again, you know, learning. It's more exciting because the revenue here is like nine thousand dollars doing expert uh, doing like expedited freight or LTL. I could do everything, you know. It's, it's, it's pretty much a good opportunity for me and i wish i would have came over here in july because i've been making a lot better money than i was making at usa trucks it just wasn't it wasn't making i was not making enough money to sustain my truck and uh one time i had three thousand dollars it was time for me to get tires just to keep you guys in mind i had this truck since 86 miles on it and now it has 300 and 58,000 miles. So I couldn't even afford oil changes. I couldn't even afford fuel filters. I couldn't afford none of those things. And it became down to safety and how well my vehicle will last me uh, over the next four years or so, because I don't think I'm gonna hit like 700,000 until four years. So it's still, I don't run my truck raggedy. So I don't run very far, you know, I'll probably, my trip's probably like less than four or five hundred dollars, four hundred, four or five hundred miles a trip. So it came down to like, yeah, if I'm gonna spend three thousand dollars on some tires and that's all I got on my settlement, and I'm not making like four thousand dollars uh, minimum, I just couldn't. I can't. I can't do that. It's like you can't even take care of your family. Like you know, you can't put up money for maintenance and stuff like that. So it becomes an issue. So, and you know. Um, if I was USA, that's why I'd be sitting down like, hey man, uh, if our drivers can't afford maintenance, how can we keep bringing on drivers? But they don't care because they make more money off their leases and they constantly keep throwing people in their old uh, T680. So, and they've been high idled. Most of them trucks have a lot of, uh, a lot of wear because you know, they, they don't have APUs on them and they end up drivers be idling all day all night if you go to a usa truck lot you could tell these trucks have been uh idling a lot so um it's not gonna last a long time you know you don't idle a dpf truck because dpf can have issues over time so my truck only has eight eighty seven hundred engine hours and i don't really idle that much i didn't idle last night it was cold i got a bunk heater soon to have a, a apu put on and I don't have to idle my truck and that's that's a blessing too so but you know hey usa was a good stepping stone for me i got my truck i finished my lease completed it in july and they let me do it they let me buy out my truck early i did have to pay for the rest of the lease so i think it's like july i post finger finish finish in october so you do that and you do the math and it's like 2400 dollars all the way up to then so I had to finance the rest of that. And now I'm looking to just get it paid off very soon. And, you know, uh, thanks to my uh, finance company, they helped me out a lot, you know, uh, making sure that I could uh, do this transition and stuff while it was kind of rough. So they helped me out a lot. And I appreciate that a lot by the grace of God, you know. Man, I'm, I'm blessed, man. And that I can, I don't have to make no payments until March. So they helped me out a lot. But that, but as soon as March hit, I'ma start sending them big chunks of money just to throw at it. I mean, this truck thing, it's not, it's much, this truck is only 64,000 left. So, um, would I lease again? No, no, leasing is too expensive. Why overpay when you could just go to an auction and just buy a DD-15 uh, 2019 Freightliner for like 50,000 or less, you know, or, you know, or you could go buy you a new truck for 117,000. That's up to you, you know, but for me, it don't work, so. But, hey, I mean, I, I like the new Freightliner that's coming out, the Super Truck 2, but that'd be something I work my way up to as I pay off my truck and just pay cash for that truck because, you know, as you the, the more money you make, you need more deduction. So, I don't, I don't plan on keeping this truck forever, but I know whoever gets this truck, they'll be happy because it's well taken care of and, 
I'm finna get little small stuff, uh, little small stuff like the squeaking belts and stuff, get that stuff fixed. It's nothing wrong with it, it works, it works well. I'm just tired of squeaking, but worn out parts I change. And that's why I've never been on the side of the road. I'm always checking over my truck, looking at the hoses, uh, checking uh, the play in the fan in the fan and the belts and making sure my belts look good. They still look brand new. I just haven't really, I just have to, I just have to put more money into the truck. I don't want to take home a lot of money, you know, cause the truck maintenance is more important than me trying to, you know, impress a, impress a bunch of dudes, you know, and then, my wife at home, so I like I gotta make sure I take care of her. And she got what she need, and the kids got what they need. That's that's more important to me, you know. Sometimes you do gotta fight against this flesh, cause your flesh be like, oh man, I like to look good, man, with the polo and Apple Watch, and you know. But some of that stuff ain't worth it, man. So, but I just wanna let y'all know, man. Hey, cause lease is completed. Left USA Trucks with a better company. I gotta go home and get my plate. Still got my temp. My plate came pretty fast. I gotta go home and get my license too. I got a temporary license and don't expire till next month though. Uh, had to have my hazmat to come over here, and that's good too. Hazmat pays over here, man. Like I'm making big money on hazmat, so. But I just started, so still on my first load. Uh, I rescued this load, and I just can't deliver until Monday. So, but it is what it is. So, but. Hey man, I'll talk to y'all later, man. This is Antonio HDR out. I'll probably be making more videos. I don't know, once a week, I'm thinking. Cause I'm busy, man. I like to I like to drive. I don't like to have to edit videos and all that. So, you know. I kinda had to humble myself because, you know, a lot of people was following me back then. And I appreciate anybody who's still subscribing and watch. So But let me get up out of here, y'all. Peace.